Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to go through this HTU21D humidity temperature sensor. So let's get into it. Now, the sensor itself I picked up, uh, you can get it online, eBay, uh, AliExpress, all those different places. I'll throw a couple links in the description below, that way you can go check out where you can get them from as well. But as for price, you know, it's under $5 uh, Australian, which is pretty good with free shipping. So, And considering they're actually quite reliable compared to some of the other sensors that I've done in previous videos with temperature and humidity, um, they're actually quite good. But first thing I want to do is jump into the specs. Now, these are the specs from the listing where I purchased it from. So a couple of these dot points to begin with, it obviously talks about being highly accurate. Um, but one of the things is, is it runs off the I2C communication uh, protocol, which basically will have the two lines being the clock and data. I'll show you that a bit later on. Which means that we don't have like a data pin, like a digital or analog reading that comes out of it compared to some of those other type of sensors. But the good thing is, is that we get the data uh, through the I2C communication and we can also daisy chain multiple I2C uh, modules. So we could do that with, let's say, 10 of these sensors. We can connect them all up, which is good. Um, but I'll show you that in another video, how we do multiple I2C components. But if you were to actually connect multiple devices, it says they're about disabling the resistor. There's actually um, a solder point on there. I'll have to show you that uh, a bit later on. But basically we have the four pins, which I'll show you in the wiring, VCC, one for ground, and the two data lines. As for the actual requirements of the module, we have the power supply, which is 1.5 to 3.6. Now, the unit itself, uh, we would run off the 3.3 volt rail. If you run it off the five, you will damage it. So don't run it off the five. Humidity range. Now, I'm just gonna take a bit of this with a grain of salt because I'm gonna go through and actually show you the data sheet a bit further on. But a lot of these points here, some of them are, are a little bit off um, from the actual data sheet, but we'll jump into that and have a look at it. But as you can see there, there's basically what the actual measurement ranges are. Before I jump into the data sheet though, I just wanna quickly point out that the module itself is the whole component. So the whole uh, purple board or red board, depending on which one you pick up, because there's a few similar um, just on different colored boards. But the actual black chip there that you can see the arrow pointing to, that is the HTU21D sensor. So that's what we'll be looking at in the data sheet is that actual component, which you can see here. Because the board itself is quite a basic thing, um, they mainly just talk about the details all in this data sheet. Now you can see here, it goes through the voltage levels and the storage temperature, the actual operating temperature ranges, all that stuff's there. Now, sometimes they differ a little bit from some of those type of uh, listings when you go to buy them, but all the details here, I'll put a link in the description as well if you wanna go check out the data sheet. Um, but yeah, everything in here will tell you what you need to know. So it has graphs on um, how it's actually affected by the humidity, um, a lot of the, the equations as well. Uh, we also have a whole section dedicated to the I2C component if you need to daisy chain multiple units because you'll need to set addresses that it knows, okay, this sensor is sensor one, this sensor is sensor two, because it's doing them all in a daisy chain, basically. Um, so you can go through and have a look through all the data and look at you know everything you need to know because it ha basically has everything in there on that chip, um, how it communicates and you know down to the exact uh, timings of the data that's being sent through the I2C channel. So sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. Um, I'm gonna show you how to set this all up just for the one uh, module by itself now, how you can receive the, the data and the info on the temperature and also the humidity. Um, but like I said, go through the data sheet and have a quick look through and see what you can find. And um, yeah, if there's anything that you need to know from it, it's all in there, including the dimensions and everything as well of, of the sensor um, itself. All right, so if we come across to the wiring of the actual module itself, like I said, there's those four 
uh, pins there. Now, depending on which way you've actually soldered on your little connectors, um, you can have it either flipped upside down or facing up. You'd probably want it facing up because your temperature and humidity you want to actually be exposed to the sensor. But um, what we have is the plus or the VCC, which runs across to the 3.3 volt. Don't run it into the 5 volt. It's not going to be good for it. Um, you'd run your ground, which is your black wire, to the negative or the ground on the actual sensor itself. Now, the data and the clock pins, we have the green and the blue there. As you can see on an Arduino Uno, it's going to an A4 or that analog 4 pin on the Arduino. And you've got the clock there, which is going to the analog pin 5. Now, you need to make sure that you put it in those pins. You can't just pick one and two and say, oh, I'll change it in the code because of the way that the Arduino is set up uh, to actually output the signals through certain pins. Uh, for the I2C, it needs to be in those. Now, in saying that, on what I'm using with the Arduino Mega, they're actually different pins. So on the Mega, the clock, or what you see here going into the A5, the clock on the Mega is actually pin 21, and the data pin, which on the Uno is A4, on the Mega is pin 20, which you'll see a bit later on when I show you mine all hooked up. But what we're going to do now before we hook that up is to jump back to the actual sensor, which comes in the bag uh, from when you purchase it. Sometimes they don't come with the pin soldered on. So as you can see there, there's the four pin holes where we can attach those header pins in and actually solder them on. Um, and you just have to break off uh, four of those and then solder them into the either the top or the bottom, depending on how you want your circuit to be set up. So now I've plugged it, uh, my sensor module into my breadboard and we've got the wires running out. I've got 3.3 and the ground. And then as you can see there, that pin 20 and pin 21 for the data and clock on the mega is going across to that clock and data on the actual sensor board itself. And once it's programmed, I can see there the flashing light because it's sending data through. So let's jump into the code and I'll show you how to code it. All right, so when it comes to the coding, what we're going to do is install the library first via the Manage Libraries, and then once that loads up, we can type in the search bar HTU21D. It'll give us a list of those libraries, and now most libraries also come with examples as well, which we'll use in this case. Now, there is a few different ones. You can try a diff few different ones and see which one you like the best because they're obviously set up differently uh, for what you require but I'm just going to install the spark fun one which is just basically another branded version um, with their own little bits of different code but they all do the same thing as you can see in the uh, examples we can load that up and actually bring up the demo and we will open this file everything's all in there set up ready to go um, now, you don't need to add anything else more. Um, the only thing it does is want to include the wire.h uh, file as well. So you might need to make sure that that library uh, is also installed. But make sure that your board is correctly set, whether it's Mega or Uno or whatever it is. Make sure your port's set correctly. Verify and upload, done. Then it's uploaded to the Arduino, it's good to go. Now, in this case, the code is basically giving us the temperature, uh, which is in Celsius, and we have the humidity, uh, which is a percentage. Now, if you wanted to do Fahrenheit or whatever it is you want, um, you would need to obviously add in some type of conversion there to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, but yeah, that's as simple as it is. Now, if we jump across to... I'm actually using a hairdryer on, you know, a little bit of a distance away from the sensor just to get that heat on it. And what we'll see in the results is that not only does the temperature rise, but the humidity dro uh, drops right off. And that's because that um, the hairdryer is obviously causing it to, to uh, basically take the humidity out of the air as well. And then when I start to blow air on the sensor, um, 
from my mouth. It actually increases that humidity again um, and the temperature does fluctuate a little bit, but um, it's still coming down from the heat of the actual hairdryer, uh, which you can see in the results in the serial monitor. So as we bring that up, uh, we can see first off it connects to the board and then it starts giving us those values. Now it's giving a value um, every so often. Now that delay is set on the last line of code. You can change that. Now if you go into the data sheet, it tells you all about the measuring times, but I believe it can get down to the two millisecond uh, measuring times depending on how, uh, how it's set up. Um, now Basically, you can see there the values are changing and you'll see where it drops off in the humidity uh, and the temperature gets really high when I actually put that hair dryer on it. Now, obviously, because I use the hair dryer, it did affect the temperature and the humidity quite quick. It takes a little bit to readjust and come back to that normal as well. So this is a bit of an extreme case, but just to kind of show you the results that are coming in. Now in this one, it's actually got the time there as well, which will be quite handy when you want to actually record it against certain events that might be happening. Um, so yeah, that's it's pretty straightforward code. Um, now that is for wiring just the one unit. Now if you want to see me connect up a whole bunch of these sensors via the I2C method, um, let me know and I can do a video on that as well. But as for this video, I hope it helped you set up this sensor if you needed it. Um, now, let me know what you thought of the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you also subscribe so you can keep up to date with projects similar to this. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.